Welcome back to More Sip the Tally, and I'm your host on the More Sip the Tally Power Rankings. Today we're going to talk about team number 29, the Tennessee Titans. Now, last year the Tennessee Titans were 6 and 11. They finished fourth in the AFC South. Uh, their coach was Mike Vrabel. They've changed coaches since then. We'll kind of get into that a little bit later on. But they're our number 29 um, ranked team on the More Sip the Tally Power Rankings. Let's kind of get into you know what they have coming back and moving forward. So speaking of moving forward, they have a new coach. His name is uh, Brian, Callahan, Brian Callahan. And um, in that quarterback room, I have that quarterback room ranked 27. They have a guy that I've made plenty, plenty of jokes about, Will Levis, who's probably going to start. And um, last year, nine games, 149 for a 255 for 1,800 yards, uh, four TDs and eight interceptions, who had a little run with him and DeAndre Hopkins kind of you know, clicked up a little bit and had a little little chemistry. Um, maybe that grows, maybe it doesn't, but we'll see. Uh, Mason Rudolph, a backup from, that came from the Steelers, who's had an up-and-down time with the Steelers, started, bench, started, bench, started, bench with the Steelers. Uh, played four games last year, uh, threw for 719 yards, three touchdowns. And then Malik Willis, who's the first-round, well, not the first-round pick, but the quarterback that they drafted two years ago and uh, before they drafted Will Levis last year, only played in three games, uh, four, five, 74 yards. So they got two young quarterbacks. Um, Malik Willis doesn't look like he's going to pan out. Will Levis will probably get a chance to see if he'll pan out this year. Then Mason Rudolph is just a guy just in case, you know, something happens. Um, so I still think Tennessee's in quarterback purgatory right now unless Will Levis makes a major jump between year one and year two. And that's what most people in the NFL say. The, the biggest jump comes between year one and year two. So we'll see what Lil, Will Levis brings to the Tennessee Titans in year two. All right, next up, which probably will help Will Levis or whoever is the quarterback, their running back room. I have their running back room ranked number eight, which is the best group on the team for me. Uh, in their running back room, Tony Pollard from the Cowboys. Last year, he played 17 games. Rushed for 1,005 yards, six touchdowns. Also had 55 catches for 311 yards. Uh, Tajay Spears, who played a crucial role last year, even with Derrick Henry on the team, played in all 17 games, rushed for 453 yards, but he had 52 catches. So he was there third down back. Uh, you could throw screens to him. You could dump it off to him out the backfield. He could get you some yards that kind of way. So that's going to be a great one-two punch with Tony Pollard and Tajay Spears. They also had Hassan Haskins, who uh, rushed for 93 yards and had 11 catches. And rounding that room out is Julius Chestnut, who played in three games and didn't have any stats. Going to the wide receiver room, number 16. Now, some should say this receiver room should be higher or could be higher. And I can see where, you know, you're going with that. But I got him ranked in the middle mainly because of age. Mainly, you got two 1,000-yard receivers in this room, but they all up there in age, and at some point, that's going to show. At some point, that's going to show, and I think it's going to happen this year for for some of these guys. And I think quarterback play is going to be an issue, too. I think quarterback play is going to be an issue because, think about it, those play actions hit a little different with Derrick Henry's in the backfield. Derrick Henry's not back there. And this is no shade at Tony Pollard or Tajay Spears. But read run reaction with Derrick Henry is going to be a lot different than read run reaction with Tony Pollard and Tajay Spears. But, and all that affects the wide receiver play as far as play action and stuff like that. But in the wide receiver room, they got Calvin Ridley, who had picked up from, um, <coughs> excuse me, the Jacksonville Jaguars. He played in seven, uh, 17 games, had 76 catches for 1,016 yards, eight touchdowns. D Hop, who's coming back. 17 games, 75 catches, 1,057 yards. So they got 2,000-yard receivers. They picked up Tyler Boyd from the Bengals, who had a solid career with the Bengals as a slot receiver. Uh, 67 catches, 667 yards, two touchdowns. They had Traylon Burks, who is uh, borderline on the B-word. Borderline on the B-word, and not Burks. <laughs> uh, played 11 games last year, 221 yards, 13.8 uh, yards per catch. Uh, Nick Westbrook Akini, 14 games, 317 yards, three TDs, and running out that room is Kyle Phillips. And I have their wide receiver room number 16. Their tight end room, 21. I really do like Chiga Kumwu. I do. 17 catches, 54 yards, uh, 528 yards, and one TD, 9.8 yards per catch. I like them coming out of Maryland. 
I really like his game in Tennessee. Hopefully they use him in a lot of H-back and move roles. If their OC knows what's good for him, the OC is Nick Holtz. So um, and Josh Wiles also in that room, nine catches for 94 yards last year. And they got Nick Vanette from the Chargers who didn't play very much. But I like Chig. Uh, Josh can be a good complimentary to it, but Chig is the the reason they they got the little ranking that they do have because I really I really like Chig and um, I think he can have a, a a big year for him this year. Going to the O line, I got that O line ranked number eighteen. Projected starters for these guys: J C Latham, the rookie. Uh, Peter Skaronski should, should be in his second year at left guard. Lowell Cushenberry coming in from the Broncos, who was their highest rated offensive lineman, uh, graded out at a seventy three point two. Uh, Daniel Brunskill and Dylan Radnutz. Radnutz, I'm sorry, Radnutz. Um, these guys, pr- pretty much all of them, well, not all of them, Lord Cushenberry coming in, J.C. Latham as a rookie. But those other three guys, you know, have great familiarity with each other. They ran a lot of outside zone stuff. So if I'm the new OC, I'm going to try to stick to that plan, especially with Tony Pollard. And Tajay Spears, you got two shifty guys that can kind of, you know, be one cut and go guys. You don't really have the power guy that Derrick Henry was. And even with Ter- Derrick Henry, they ran a lot of outside zone. They didn't run a lot of power stuff with them. So I was kind of stay on that same scheme and, and use those guys the best of their ability. And Cushionberry is a move guy also. I like Cushionberry coming out of LSU. So, and he's just really, really panning out. Let's go on the other side, the defensive side, that defensive line edge group. Now, last year, and I can't remember if I had him at number one. But I had them ranked very, very high. If not number one, they were in the top five. But I think I had them number one. Uh, and a lot of that was to do with Jeffrey Simmons. I'm the total opposite this year. Not saying Jeffrey Simmons sucks, but I think as a whole, this group will have a lot of gelling to do. And I got them ranked 28. Now, we're going to start with this. They're 3-4 guy, 3-4 team. Now, got a new D.C., Denard Wilson. Coming in from the Baltimore Ravens. So they're going to be very multiple. But base for them is probably going to be 3-4. But they're going to be extremely multiple. And a lot of stuff is going to happen. A lot of stuff is going to change. Because the D.C. is coming from Baltimore. But uh, Harold Landry. 17 games. 70 tackles. 14 TFLs. Um, 10 and a half sacks. 21 QB hits. On the other side of him. As a stand-up defensive end. Is Arden Key. Um, 30 tackles. 4 TFLs. 12 QB hits. And 6 sacks. But the main guy. On this defensive front. Jeffrey Simmons, Hale State, root to the Brewers, 12 games, uh, 44 tackles, 10 TFLs, 5 and a half sacks, 11 QB hits. Jeffrey Simmons is a monster. With Aaron Donald retiring, and you got, um, you know, you got a few guys around the league that can probably take that mantle as the best interior defensive lineman. You know, Quint, Quentin up in, in New York and, and a few other guys around the league. Jeffrey Simmons could, could, ascend in that conversation that's how highly i think of him but he has to do it i thought he was going to do it last year because he was coming off a pro bowl and all that stuff and um he didn't but he has the the abilities to do it and i've seen this cat from high school to college to now he has the ability to be one of the next great defensive tackles in football but he got to do it consistently uh, rounding out that room is Sebastian Joseph Day. He played with the Chargers in the 49ers last year. 16 games, 36 tackles, uh, 3 sacks, 11 QB hits. Now, Javon Day Sweat It's going to get a lot of PT. That's the rookie from Texas. Nose tackle or defensive lineman from Texas. He's going to get a lot of PT in this group. So, I got this group ranked as 28. But this is one of the one of the rankings that I, I kind of second-guessed myself when I finished. D- this is the first one. You know, out of the, the days we've been doing, this is the first one that I look at him like, eh, maybe, mm, I'm going to stick with my 28. But they really could shoot up, you know, real quick because they got some real good potential in there. All right, going to their linebacker room. <clears throat> their starting linebackers are Kenny Murray Jr. and Jack Gibbons. Now, I got the linebacker room ranked 26. And Kenny Murray came from the Chargers, played in 15 games, 107 tackles, three sacks, uh, one interception, four uh, passes defended. And then Jack Gibbons played 13 games with 95 tackles and three TFLs. And I kind of sped ball through the, the linebacker room because one of these guys going to be replaced. I don't know which one of these, but the rookie from North Carolina, Cedric Gray, he's going to take one of these spots. I, I don't know which one he's going to take. But mark my words here on, what's this, um, June 17th? Cedric Gray going to take one of these spots. 
You you can say you saw it here first. I heard it here first. Cedric Gray gonna take one of these spots. He, he's gonna be Kenny Murray or Jack Gibbons, and Cedric Gray gonna gonna ball out and have a good rookie, or at least probably the second half of the uh, 2024 season, a good rookie campaign. On to that cornerback room. Have it right, number 21. Uh, Awuzie, I, I never can say, uh, is it Cheeto? I, I, I always mess up his first name, but I know his last name is Awuzie. Came from the Bengals. Uh, 15 games, 46 tackles, 67.9 catch rate. Then they signed LeJarrius Sneed also uh, from the Chiefs, the uh, world champion Chiefs. <laughs> uh, 59, 51.9% catch rate, 10 PBUs, 17 penalties. Now, when you play a lot of man as much as they did in Kansas City, you're going to have penalties. So don't be alarmed by the 17 penalties because, you know, it happens when you play a lot of man. They play a lot of man over there. In that third corner is Roger McCrary, 15 games, 71.9% catch rate. That got to go down. And the PBU's got to go up. And that's why their cornerback room is ranked 21st because they got two solid starters. But after those guys, it goes downhill. It goes downhill. And I don't know what kind of, like, well, I do kind of know because I got Denard Wilson. I kind of got a background of what they're going to do. But Wuzier. With that 67, McCray with that 71. I, I think Sneed's the number one corner. So I'm, Sneed I'm not worried about. But Wuzier, McCrary, and everybody, the other cornerbacks, is why they 21. The 21 is no reflection on Sneed. It's, it's the rest of the guys. All right? Let's go to their safety room. In their safety room, they have um, a money hooker and Elijah Molden. I have their safety room ranked last. Dead last. Amani Hooker played 13 games, 85 tackles, three TFLs, 81.8% uh, catch rate, five PBUs, had um, one TFL, no, three TFLs, one forced fumble. And then Elijah Molden played, played in 15 games, 73 tackles, one TFL, one forced fumble, one INT, no sacks, and he had a 67.6% .6 catch rate with two PBUs. And I have their safety room ranked at 32. Let's run them all back real quick for the roundup. Quarterback room ranked 27th. Running back room ranked 8th, which is the best of, on the team. Wide receiver room ranked 16th. Tight end, 21. O-line, 18. D-line edge group, 28. I'm really worried about that one. Linebacker room, 26. Cornerback room, 21. Safety room, 32. And you put all those together and round them up. That's 21.88889. And that makes them the 29th ranked team on the more Sip the Tally Power Rankings. But before we get out of here, and I'm, I've been doing this lately, let's talk about their draft picks. And we talked about a few of them, but they drafted uh, J.C. Latham in the first round, who's probably going to start on that O-line. Javon De Sweat from Texas, they drafted him in the second round, who is probably going to get in that rotation, if not start. Uh, Cedric Gray, who I really like. I think he's going to take over one of those linebacker start spots. They picked him in the fourth round. Uh, Jarvis Brownlee, a defensive back from Louisville, um, may get in the rotation, may not. Jaquan Jackson, a receiver from Tulane. James Williams, a safety from Miami. I knew, I knew, I knew one of Mike McDonald's, if not Mike McDonald's disciples, was going to take James Williams because he's too much of a hybrid to be on some of these other teams. And if James Williams can be a – uh, uh, a fraction of what Kyle Hamilton is to Baltimore, they got themselves a winner right there. And then and, and another pick in round seven, Jalen Harrell, defensive end for Michigan. So rounding out the 2019, that's Tennessee Titans. Uh, who you think will be number 28? Put that in the comment section. I appreciate you guys for coming out. You could have been anywhere in the world. This is Coach Evans with another episode of the More Sip the Tally Power Rankings. I'll see y'all tomorrow, man. Peace and love.